Yeah, but I'm probably like kilometers an hour. I'm like 30 kilometers an hour. That was 18 kilometers an hour. Five years per second, 18 kilometers an hour. You could probably see it. Let's talk about elasticity and inelasticity. And let's keep it in one dimension still. Not that we've left one dimension yet, but let's keep it in one dimension still. In one dimensional collisions. All right, if we're talking about momentum conservation, let's take a sidestep to a new topic. If we're talking about momentum conservation, whether it's in an elastic collision or an inelastic collision, first of all, if I talk about an elastic collision versus an inelastic collision, before we conjure up like the actual physics behind these words, what do you suppose an elastic collision might look like? Yeah. Something hitting and springing back. Yeah, springing back. Well, what would an inelastic collision maybe be kind of like? What do you say, Daniel? Um, Yeah, they kind of push against something else. Anything else about the properties? Yeah. Like maybe you like push through something. Or okay. Yeah, maybe you might even be able to pass through it. Yeah. Like the train cars we did. Yeah, maybe like train cars that stick together. What else? Yeah. If it's like squishy, so some energy is lost. Okay, so losing energy because of deformation or something. Yes. Yeah, like I mean, maybe you could have. Uh, imagine like a uh, a tin foil toy car versus a toy car that's made out of like cast steel or cast aluminum. Cast aluminum, that's more friendly for kids, right? Less heavy. But if you have a tin foil toy car, it's gonna crumple when it crashes into another toy car, right? And what does a real car do? It crumples on. Crumples, it crumples. What about pool balls? Pool balls, are they, do you figure, elastic or inelastic? Why? A small scale, they don't, they don't crumple. Yeah, pen it. <laughs> yeah, if you bounce, up, if you run into a wall and you bounce back, you probably would lose some energy, right? So would you call that inelastic? It's inelastic, yeah. Now, if you ran into a wall and you're and you uh, were coated in some sort of a diamond suit that couldn't deform, you might get closer to being a true elastic collision, right? But anytime you have something that's going to lose energy due to deformation, you're likely dealing with something that's inelastic to some degree. And there's also energy loss that comes in other ways. What about in pool balls? Let's go back to pool balls really quick. If I take a pool ball and I smack it into another pool ball, let's assume that their shape doesn't even change that much. Where could the energy loss to that system be at the point noise. of collision? What's that? Noise. Yeah, noise. Absolutely. Is that actually an energy then? It truly is, yeah. Like last night, I was playing pool. And when the, the pool ball hit the other pool ball, you know, I have my white ball and it hits the eight ball because I'm trying to finish off the game. Clack. Clack, clack, clack. And I got to wait until, well, I got to close all the doors between me and the basement and the baby because I want to play pool after the baby is asleep. I got the baby monitor there. Don't want to wake up the baby. I know I'm going to lose all kinds of energy from these collisions in the form of sound. Got to make sure that I got some sound dampening things between me and the baby. That's just good sense. If I left all the doors open, that energy's gonna travel straight upstairs and then I'm gonna be getting upstairs and changing something and it's trouble. Yep. Oh, if you chain, if you, if you were to play pool in a vacuum, that's a good point. I don't know, I don't know. There, there shouldn't be, wouldn't be any air drag. Yeah. Is 
Well, it's the 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 uh, vibration of your vocal cords, yeah. And if they're Yeah, singing is going to tire you out. Anytime you dissipate energy in any way, it's going to tire you out. So you better eat breakfast. Right? Yeah, anytime you create movement or, or generate some sort of movement uh, from your biochemical energy, um, the chemistry folks will tell you you're contributing to entropy, right? Yeah. You guys are probably talking about that soon. Enthalpy? Oh, we get to entropy. Okay. All right, so let's talk about this elasticity thing. Kinetic energy. All right, I want to tie you back in. Come on, come on, come on. Kinetic energy is only conserved in, oops, in an elastic interaction. We may call that interaction a collision, but it's only conserved in scenarios that we call elastic. That's what elastic means. It bounces back. Don't lose anything. Would a spring be considered elastic? A perfect. Or does it have to be an actual collision? An ideal spring, if I compress it, mm -hmm. it would give me its energy back again, right? All right, so let's, if there's a, an elastic interaction, what about a perfectly inelastic collision? All Define your terms. All right, a perfectly inelastic collision after colliding, the particles stick together. There's a loss of energy. And oftentimes, Often, we might say deformation, especially when we're talking about these macroscopic particles or macroscopic objects like cars and, and maybe rubber balls and things like that. You're obviously uh, often going to get deformation and the, the energy is getting absorbed and changing the structure. Yeah? So on those commercials where it's like a max and you drop the bowling ball, is that an elastic? Well, it would only be elastic if the bowling ball bounced up to the same height as it, as it was dropped from. So if you take those, those cool mattress commercials, if you had a perfectly elastic um, mattress, you drop that bowling ball from a height of five feet above the bed, and it would bounce perfectly back up to five feet again. So you never be able to sleep. Never stop. <laughs> well, no, you'd probably change your body orientation, and, <laughs> and you'd okay. sort of bounce off the bed, right? So if you were jumping on the bed of a, a perfectly elastic bed, there would be an escape option. But yeah, but, I mean, bouncing a... Yeah, you wouldn't be trapped there forever. <laughs> But bouncing a, a, a ball or like a bowling ball on a perfectly elastic bed would get it right back up to the, the same height again. There's no such thing as a perfectly elastic bed. But, but like when you drop it and it like stops, yeah. that's an inelastic system, but now it's going to deform and back Right, but the mattress gets deformed. So it only has to be one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the mattress gets deformed, and it'll stay deformed until you remove the bowling ball. And then that gets into maybe like a hook slot type of argument, if you're talking about a single spring in that mattress. Yeah. Okay, there's a loss of energy, often deformation. Now, if I've got elastic interactions, and I'm going to propose that there might be something like a perfectly inelastic interac interaction, do you think there could be another thing? A perfectly elastic. A perfect. Could be. Could be. I don't know. I could talk about perfectly elastic. So maybe I'll start this as one, two, perfectly elastic collisions the total energy of the system is 
is the same, oopsie, oh man, I wish I had an eraser, is the same both, finish that sentence. The total energy of the system is the same both, before yeah, before and after. Both before and after. And now the last one, if I've got perfectly inelastic, I've got perfectly elastic, something must be somewhere in between, and we're just going to call it, well, for now, do you want to call it a, a collision? Because they cancel out. Just a j neutral elastic? Mm. What's well, a normal collision? Nothing's yeah, nothing's ever good. Let's for now, let's call it a normal collision. Maybe we'll, we'll uh, fine tune our, our vocabulary later, but a, a normal collision. Dampened yeah. elastic collision. That's, that's a nice title for it. A dampened, dampened elastic collision. I like that one. Partially elastic? Yeah, partially. Okay. That's a good name. I like that one. That's a creative word. Partially elastic. <laughs> Why don't we say that in a partially elastic collision, that's what we've called it, a partially elastic collision, there's energy loss, but the objects don't stick to each other. Does that sound more like a, your average car collision or a pool ball game or whatever? Cars don't always stick together in a car collision, right? Rare, rarely do they stick together, yeah. So that's, that's probably a good one to fit with this. Maybe uh, in a pool ball game, obviously the, the energy isn't totally conserved. That's why I gotta close the doors when I play pool in the basement, the baby's sleeping. <laughs>